So, I have a confession. Uh-oh. I have a problem with Santa. I know you all love Santa and you are waiting for Santa to come, but Santa has a list of the naughty and the nice. And depending on where you fall on that list, you might not get what you want for Christmas. So as Jesus comes into the world, it just reminds me that that's not God's message. God's message is that you are beloved just as you are. When you do the wrong thing, when you do the right things. And when Declan was six months old, we moved to North Carolina. My mom moved to North Carolina from Virginia with my stepfather. And Michael and I moved to North Carolina. We all lived in a house together. <clears throat> And that was fun at times, and other times it was challenging. And I don't know if you know, but there is this thing about mothers and daughter-in-laws and mothers and son-in-laws. And after a time, my mom purchased a shirt from Michael. And it was a shirt, and there were two words on it, and it said, as is. And she was telling him that she was going to accept him just as he was, and not try to change him. And it was really beautiful. So we didn't stay in North Carolina that long. We really only stayed there for a year and a half before we moved to Maine. And when Michael and I were leaving, he re-gifted that shirt back to my mom, saying that he had really learned how to also accept her as is. So that's my message for kids, is that, yeah, you know, I get it, naughty and nice. But what I did was, I found out all the favorite colors of the kids and their shirt sizes, and we made shirts for them because I want them to remember during this holiday season, even though the naughty and nice listen and Santa and all that stuff, that God really does love each and every one of us just as we are. So if you are here today, and I do not have a bag with a shirt and a shirt size for you, your parents can just let me know, and we will get the elves busy, and by next week, we will have a shirt for you also have an ornament in those bags and some cards for the 12 days of Christmas that start right on Christmas for some faith practices. So we're really happy that we were able to get that all together. And thank you to Arnie Keen for coloring for me. So as we pray, I want you to look at one of your hands. Turn it over so your palm is facing up and lightly trace the folds and the creases that you see there. And look at your fingertips. The lines on the palm of your hand and the swirls and ridges of your fingerprints are unique just to you. No one else in the world has those prints. That's not the only amazing thing about your hands. Did you know that a human hand has 100,000 nerves? And each and every one of our fingertips has more than 3,000 touch receptors. So one of the ways that Jesus prayed was with his hands. And once, very early in the morning, Jesus was teaching people about God's love. And just then, some men interrupted, bringing a woman along with them. And they said that she had done something terrible, something so terrible that they wanted her to be stoned. That's what they did back then. They threw rocks at you if you did something wrong. Aren't we glad we don't live back then? So they wanted Jesus to tell her that she deserved to die for the bad things she had done. But Jesus looked at the woman the way he looks at you. He saw her through the eyes of love. And after they told him what she'd done, Jesus was quiet and he crouched down on the ground. And maybe he got low to show the woman. Maybe it was less scary for her to see him lower. Maybe it distracted the angry men when he did that and made them wonder what he was doing. Maybe being quiet and getting down on the ground gave him time to think. And he drew in the dirt with his fingertips. And what do you think he drew? I wonder if he might have been writing the word of love, or maybe he was just drawing patterns in the dust to calm himself and everyone else down. Maybe he needed a moment to think about how to answer them. When he stood up again, he asked the angry men if they'd ever done anything wrong. He asked if anyone there was perfectly perfect. And his point was that everyone makes mistakes. Everyone does things that they know are wrong. And this made the men quiet down and they left one by one by one without hurting the woman. They knew the truth about themselves, that they had no right to be unkind to that woman. They were just the same. No one is perfect. Jesus gently told the woman that she could go and he gave her hope about what the rest of her life would be like. And then he continued teaching people about God's love. Jesus knows the truth about us. 
He knows that we are weak sometimes, afraid sometimes, hurt sometimes, and he doesn't want to judge or embarrass us. Instead, he looks at us with eyes of love and touches our hearts with a calming message of love, light, and freedom as his. Amen.